why the option of a cap raising and not, for instance, going offshore, uh, looking at those borrowing rates, uh, particularly out of Europe, indeed in the United States, and finding some willing, uh, some buyers of the debt? Carson, that would be nice, but the fact is that 10 struggles with a big debt uh, load. And if we have a look at 10, it's probably uh, getting pretty close to its covenants, which would be a key reason behind a possible capital raising. If we have a look at EBITDA to net debt, its covenant stands at four times, so we really can't exceed that. And it's probably going to get to about 3.7 times in FY13 in the current financial year. And if we have a look at the interest cov coverage covenant, that stands at three times. It's probably at around three times uh, in the current financial year. Of course, this has been made a little bit worse by the I proceeds. That's the sale of its outdoor advertising unit. It was initially supposed to get $145 million for that advertising unit, but we know that that was bid down to $113 million. So that has an impact in terms of where it stands uh, in terms of debt. And this capital raising comes at a time when we have seen media companies doing relatively well we have a look at the last month it's been a good month for those media stocks we've seen seven west media up by 42 percent fairfax has risen 20 percent and 10 itself has risen 15 percent in fact if we have a look at the last month this is what 10 share price looks like so you can see it's not a bad performance there but as peter mentioned it is coming off a low base if i change that to a one-year chart it looks very different indeed and you can see it's been a pretty horrible time for 10 shareholders we have a look at the actual business this is a business with high fixed costs and we know that the emphasis has been on cost cutting and saving costs but the revenue here is the key we've continued to see revenue weakness and as long as we see revenue weakness what we see is the valuation of these media companies and um, while they look like good value come under pressure and those valuations continuing to decrease and I guess in terms of revenue there's a key link and a high correlation to ratings and that can be quite uncertain but in the ratings world we know that seven is winning there and ten is really lagging behind so ten it looks like a possible capital raising this will help to strengthen its balance sheet and really it's because of the huge amount of debt that it's really looking at equity raising rather than looking at raising uh, you know when it comes to TPG uh, Julia you've got ACMA uh, got taking this uh, company to court over triple zero access a, a, a bit of event risk uh, for investors but more broadly what are you seeing the stock doing uh, in the next wee while Carson, I think this is one of, going to be one of the more interesting annual general meetings today. Now, TPG has done extremely well in the past year. In fact, the stock's in the top 10 performers for the ASX 200 with a rise of 75.2%. And if we have a look at the telecom space, we know that this is a space that is changing rapidly. And it's really becoming all about the post-NBN world. Post-NBN, what we are likely to see is that the cost advantage that TPG has to be eroded. So instead, it's going to be all about scale it's going to be about customer service and it's going to be about product innovation so we'll be looking at some signs of all of these three coming through from TPG of course, the other thing that the market is watching for is possible acquisitions. We know that TPG is a favourite to pick up Leighton's telecommunication assets and it has gone to round two in terms of the bidding process and TPG looks like the clear favourite here. Now, the next-gen assets are the most valuable out of the, uh, the telecom assets that Leighton's has. It's the second largest fibre uh, fiber optic cable network here in Australia and it could fetch up to one billion dollars now if TPG is successful in picking up these fiber optic assets from Leighton's then we would be looking at a possible capital raising or a debt funding or perhaps both to make up that one billion dollar sum not only that we're also watching its strategic investment in IINet it owns a 7.24 percent stake and there has been a lot of speculation in the past that perhaps TPG could launch a full takeover of IINet. So the AGM today should be interesting on a number of fun fronts. We'll be watching that post-MBN world. We'll also be watching p uh, potential acquisitions especially in terms of the Leighton's uh, telecommunication assets and IINet and especially how that would be funded, whether we are looking at a capital raising or more debt uh, to fund those uh, potential acquisitions. On the ASX 200 early days, but it looks pretty cemented with an 11.5% drop. Julia Lee, any other stocks that you're watching today? I'm just looking at other bottom movers. Oceana Gold, that might be an interesting one given the gold price moves overnight. Western Areas, Macquarie Atlas, Jindalby, Flipside, best performers so far, Flight Centre, Link, NRW, 7 West Media, M2. To Kingsgate, what's standing out to you? 
I guess yesterday was an interesting day and in terms of uh, top stocks we saw a 52 week high reached by some of those defensive stocks like Commonwealth Bank, like Telstra and Tra Transurban which has a dividend payment coming up. So these are the stocks that seem to have been in focus in 2012 and we are expecting that to continue. In fact the lows, uh, the 52 week lows were reached by a lot of those mining service companies. NRW yesterday reached a 52 week low. It looks like it's coming under pressure once again and this is a trend that we see in the market. There's been a number of studies done on momentum and usually when stocks reach 52 week highs they continue to go higher and when stocks reach 52 week lows the probability is that they'll continue to go on lower and it looks like we've seen that type of pattern here today. Yesterday was a bit of a strange one we saw an interest rate cut and yet markets reacted like we got an interest rate rise. In fact we saw the ASX 200 falling, we saw the Australian dollar rising, we saw high yielding stocks falling and the retailers also falling and usually you'd expect the opposite reaction in all of these assets. Um, so today we're going to be watching that GDP number carefully because it does look like the markets have reacted in a little bit of a strange way and they're reacting as though we have seen that rate cut cycle coming to an end for the time being. So I guess the market is forward looking and the market yesterday signaling that we aren't likely to get uh, any more rate cuts anytime soon but of course this GDP print is going to be important. The market's expecting to see 0.7 percent growth. If we do see weaker growth that is going to increase expectations that we will see more more rate cuts so that could be a positive for those high yielding and the retailers on the market which really didn't react uh, in a positive way to that rate cut yesterday as we would have expected.